What is up, everybody? Almost Evil 33 is here again, and I got some more Medal of Honor gameplay for you. And this is the second installment of the How to Get a Cruise Missile series. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the score chains and support actions and how to use them, and my opinions of each of them, and I'll explain it in more detail in a second. Uh, before I start, though, I just want to say, first off, yes, this is Mazari Sharif Airfield, the same map that I had for the first How to Get a Cruise Missile video. So I kind of apologize for that. This is defensive, though, so I kind of like how, you know, you guys can see my tactics for both defensive and offensive situations on this map. So I think that's kind of cool. So hopefully you guys will get something about how I play this map, get some ideas, and kind of institute them when you play yourself on this map. But anyway, getting on to my topic here, I want to talk about the score chains. Now, I'm just going to talk briefly about w my opinions on the whole system in general. I love the score chain system in this game. It's basically the sole factor that keeps me into Medal of Honor. Although I love the gunplay in Medal of Honor, and I like a lot of the maps, and, you know, um, I like how the sounds are and the explosions. I like everything about the game. The score chains are what keep me in it. I love the system. I love having, you know, a balanced uh, reward system. Unlike Call of Duty's killstreak system, I think the score chains are very balanced. The only thing that's not balanced is the spawn traps, but in terms of, you know, how many points how many points you get for the defensives and how powerful the offensives are at each level, I think they're very balanced. So I really appreciate what DICE did with the score chains, and I really pray that Danger Close is going to bring them back and do a good job with them in Medal of Honor Warfighter. But that's a topic for another day. So... Um, also, a quick uh, thank you to Krahu and Mr. Texan505. I had a dual comm with Mr. Texan505 that was put up on his channel. Uh, we just kind of talked a little bit about Warfighter. We didn't go into too much detail because we didn't have a ton of time. But um, that was a pretty good video. And I also want to thank Krahu for shouting me out on his channel. A lot of you guys came from his channel when he shouted me out in his last Medal of Honor video. So thanks to you, man, if you're watching this. That was really cool. And now, <laughs> finally, I'm going to get started. So I'm gonna just going to start with the very first level, and how I'm going to organize this is the first thing I'll say is, like, I'll explain the score chain and what it is. I'll explain the offensive and then the defensive, and then I'll explain, you know, what I think about it. What the, you know, do I think the blast radius is weak? Do I think that it's strong? Do I think you should use it? And then I'll kind of just give you a final opinion on it, and, you know, how often should you use it? How often should you use the defensive instead? So that's how I'm going to organize this. Alright, so we're going to start with level 1, and this score chain is acquired at 50 points, and it is the Mortar Strike slash Intel UAV level. And I know you guys already know my opinion on this score chain, and that is to use the defensive, which is the Intel UAV 100% of the time. And the reason I tell you guys to do that is because I, in my last video I explained how important the UAV is for those two reasons, that you can see the enemies behind you, and you can uh, know where the enemy is spawning, which helps set up spawn traps. So... Those are the two reasons that I always put up the UAV, and I highly suggest you guys always put it up. So that kind of covers it almost. I mean, the Mortar Strike, if you really want me to explain it, it's a very weak uh, kind of group of mortars that comes down. It doesn't really kill that many enemies. I really, really, really suggest not using it. Even if you think you have a spawn trap set up, it just don't use it. I really don't suggest it. Some people I've seen can get kills with them, but I know I can't, and I know a lot of other people think they can, but they, in reality they can't. So I suggest don't use it. It's a mistake. So moving right along, now we're up to the second score chain, which is acquired at 100 points, which is the Rocket Strike slash Match Ammo level. So the Rocket Strike I'll start with is a score chain that has a 5 second delay, from when you call it in with your binoculars to when the rockets actually come down. I think it's about five seconds. Maybe it's a little bit less. I could be wrong. Um, now, do I like the rocket strike? Yes, I do like the rocket strike a lot. I think the rocket strike is very effective, and it can start spawn traps, and it can help clear out enemies a lot. If there's snipers, you know, camping on this roof that are battering your team when they're trying to get out of the spawn, put rockets on them. They'll die. The rockets could be very effective, so I suggest them. No doubt about it. Um, you gotta be careful with rockets, though, because if you screw them up and you get no kills with them and you called them in when you had, you know, 105 points, it's a long road to get to the Hellfire by just shooting people. Like, 75 points doesn't seem like a ton, but it is. 
So be careful when you're using the rockets. If you don't know where the enemy is, don't call them in because although I like the rockets a lot, they don't have a very large blast radius. So you need to be careful when you're calling them in because if you screw them up, you're screwed. <laughs> Uh, a lot of the times you won't make it to the next score chain without dying, so if you do screw him up, just go all for the offensives. And look at this Hellfire missile here. Is that beautiful or what? Placed right on the corner of the tank, and I took out the guys with it. That was awesome. But anyway, I'm off ta uh, topic here. So what do I think about match ammo? Match ammo improves the accuracy of your bullets, and obviously it grants your team that same added accuracy. I don't know what it does in real life. I'm not going to explain what any of these do in real life because I'll probably screw it up and then I'll have people trying to correct me in the comments. So I'm not even going to try to explain what everything does. Uh, so match ammo pretty much improves the accuracy of your bullets and your team's bullets in this game. So, I mean, it's not a bad thing to have, but I think the rockets can be more effective as long as you know where the enemy's spawning. If you have no idea, then I'd use match ammo. But like I said in my last video, hang on to your uh, score chain. Don't just call it in right away. You don't have to. Hang on to it. Kind of just relax for a little bit. Get some kills. Lay low. Do that kind of a thing. So that's pretty much my opinion on match ammo. Obviously, it grants you 25 points. And if you're on PC, I believe it still gives you 30. All right, moving on. Let's say you got to 175 points. You are at score chain level 3 which is the Hellfire Missile slash Flak Vest score chain. Uh, I'm going to start with the Hellfire. What do I think about it? I love the Hellfire Missile. And it's the one score chain that I will use almost 100% of the time. The only time I won't use it is if I... Um, the only time I won't use the Hellfire Missile is if I have enough points to get boosted up to the Artillery Strike. So, for example, if I call on a Rocket Strike when I'm at 140 points and... That rocket strike kills so many people that I'm at uh, 230 points. Then I'm just going to call in the flak vest. But other than that, I will call in the hellfire missile, I think, 100% of the time. Because it is basically a short kill. No matter where you call it in from, you should be able to direct it at somebody. Because it's so guidable and easy to move when you're calling it in. That you should easily be able to kill people with it. Like, without a problem at all. And it has a decent blast radius. It's not large, but it doesn't have to be. Because killing people with it is so simple. And if you called in your rocket strike effectively and on a good position, you might just be able to st uh, start up a spawn trap with the Hellfire missile. So, you know, like I said with the rocket strike, it doesn't have a huge blast radius, so be careful. Because if you screw up the Hellfire, which, you know, you might, it's a long road to artillery. So just be careful. So Flak Vest, what do I think about them? They grant you 25 points on console. And I think there's still 30 on PC. They give your team extra health. Uh, I don't think it's just explosives that they help you from. I think they're, they boost your team's health in general. I think 25%. I could be wrong with that, though. So, I mean, it's pretty basic. Uh, improves your team's health. Makes it harder for you to die. So that's always a good thing to have on hand. So I always recommend using the Hellfire Missile. It could be really helpful. All right, so moving right along here, next is the Artillery Strike slash FMJ Ammo, or Full Metal Jacket Ammo, score chain. So you have the Artillery Strike, and what do I think about it? I think the Artillery Strike is one of the deadliest score chains in this entire game. A lot of people are really surprised when I say that, and the reason is because they're like, well, you know, I think it's just an improved version of the Mortar Strike. No, it is not. The Artillery Strike is absolutely nasty in this game, and I'll tell you why. So, if you have this enemy team in any sort of a spawn trap, I don't care what, I don't care, you know, if they're behind a rock or in a corner of a building, if you put the artillery strike down on them, they will die. And the best thing about it is, let's say you killed a bunch of people with your hellfire, put the artillery strike down, there's no delay. Those uh, artillery shells come down right away. That's what I love about it. You don't have to wait five seconds like the rocket strike or even, you know, air support like the strafing run and the uh, F-16s and even the cruise missile. You don't have to wait. You put that son of a gun down, you're good to go. I mean, uh, it, they just come, those shells just come flying in and that team is done, whoever they're on top of. And it has a pretty large radius, so I highly suggest using them. I highly suggest using the artillery strike. It's absolutely fantastic. Especially if you have the enemy in any kind of a spawn trap and you know where they're spawning, put it down. Just do it. It really works. Yeah, just do it. It, it really works. 
That was kind of weird. Anyway, uh, so uh, full metal jacket ammo. What do I think about that? I mean, it boosts your bullet damage for you and your whole team. Gives you 30 points on console. PC, I have no idea. Maybe 40. Uh, I think it's good. But I definitely suggest using the artillery strike personally because of everything that I just explained. So, we are up to air support. Score chain level 5. The strafing run slash jammer score chain. Alright. This is an important one. It's probably one of the most interesting. I love the strafing run in this game. I think it's really good. I think the A-10 is awesome. However, the path is very linear. And I don't know how much of a radius it has, like from the left to the right but like going um in terms of how far back the strafing run goes it goes far i'll tell you guys a really quick story here because i have to wrap this up soon but um i was on dewoggle camp and i was in the back building where all those snipers go you know where the uh on top of the hill where all those buildings are i was all the way in the back building where all those snipers go i clipped the strafing run on the wall and i was like oh god I just screwed that up, so I just ran away, and the strafe actually came down on the mountain of the other side of the map and killed the other team, so I was totally shocked. I just couldn't believe it, so that was awesome. So I highly suggest using the strafing run. It's really awesome. It works. Make sure you don't screw it up, though, and, uh, you know, 100 points is a long way to go, so make sure you know what you're doing when you call it in. Now, the airstrike and, uh, what's that, sabot rounds, I think they're called. Use the airstrike, it kicks ass, f 16s are the shit, and it just has a massive blast radius, a lot of people can be killed when you put that son of a gun down, so definitely use the airstrike, just put it anywhere near the spawn. Oh, quick thing about the strafing run, put the uh, marker in front of your target, because like you noticed in this video, I put the strafing run marker down in front of where I wanted the strafe to come, because 75% of the strafing run comes down behind where you put the marker. And the airstrike, put down the marker, like, uh, behind where you want the airstrike to hit. Because I think about 70% of the airstrike hits in front of where you put the marker. And the airstrike is very large, so back up. And the cruise missile is like, bam, and you kill everybody. So thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will catch you guys later. I have an Almost Bored episode coming out this weekend, and some more Medal of Honor and Battlefield next week. Peace out, guys.